Hey folks, Cam Rogers here for College Football Now, breaking down the latest surrounding Kelly Bryant. He is indeed transferring. I have my top six teams and destinations for Kelly Bryant, but first, the news. He told the Greenville News in an article published today that he is leaving Clemson. Bryant said, quote, I feel like it's what's best for me and my future. Now, the Tigers named five-star freshman and number one overall quarterback recruit Trevor Lawrence as their starter for their week five game against Syracuse. Bryant said that was a slap in the face. Dabo Sweeney said everybody is entitled to their opinion. And then so here we are. Kelly Bryant, 16 and 2 as a starter, led the Tigers of Clemson to the 2017 college football playoff. They lost in the semifinals to Alabama. Bryant didn't practice Tuesday and had reportedly an emotional conversation with Dabo Sweetie. Now, Bryant is the second high-profile Clemson quarterback to transfer since May of 2018 when former five-star Hunter Johnson left the program and then picked Northwestern. Now, it is of note as well that Trevor Lawrence has been performing really well so far this season for Clemson. One of the most highly touted recruits at the quarterback position that I have seen in quite some time. Let's take a look at his stats so far this year. Also of note, Lawrence and Bryant have been splitting repetitions at the quarterback position so far this season. Bryant has been the starter to this point, of course. Lawrence so far this year, 39 of 60, 600 yards, nine touchdowns, two interceptions. Way better than Bryant's stat line, as you see here. 36 of 54, 461 yards, just two touchdowns to one lone interception there. Time for you guys to vote. Who's the better quarterback? L for Lawrence, B for Bryant in the comments section. Go ahead and type away. Let me know what you guys think. Now, with the new NCAA redshirt rules here, that rule says players can play up to four games and not be charged a season of eligibility. So Bryant played four games exactly. If he played one more, that year of eligibility would be gone. So something of note right there with Kelly as he looks for a new destination in college football. So with that, let's get to my top six teams, and we will start things off with number six, of course, West Virginia. The, the Mountaineers are 3-0 and so far this year. Will Greer, of course, a transfer from Florida, so West Virginia has a history in that department. Now, Greer is, of course, slated to hit the NFL draft in 2019, and there's no clear-cut next step after Will Greer leaves. There's Allison there on the depth chart. He has very little experience, just four total passes and one completion. By the way, one of those passes was an interception. West Virginia can really continue its fine play so far in college football into next season as well if they do indeed have Kelly Bryant on the roster there. It would be an interesting move, maybe not the best fit in the world as I go through these other teams here, but it is certainly a team to watch out for out there. The uh, West Virginia Mountaineers could be a destination. Let's take a look at number five, Illinois, two and two on the year so far. The reality is Illinois is just not a good football program right now. And Lovey Smith, head coach, needs a major push because if Lovey Smith cannot get some sort of success this season, I think he's in trouble, guys. And let's say Illinois gets Kelly Bryant this year. Bryant will be your quarterback in 2019, and maybe that could save Lovey Smith's job as we stand. So it's something of note because Illinois lost to South Florida two weeks ago, 25-19. They got crushed by Penn State, 63-24. If Illinois loses at Rutgers this week, Lovey Smith's job is going to be in major trouble but maybe he can save it if he finds a way to get Kelly Bryant. So Illinois is there at number five on the list. Let's go to Florida now. The Gators are three and one so far this year. Now, the current Florida staff is nothing like the staff that offered Bryant out of high school, but they do share one thing in common here. Need at the quarterback position. Sophomore Felipe Franks has been solid for Florida as the Gators are three and one so far this year. 
but he's just completing 52.6% of his passes, and he also barely won the starting quarterback job. Plus, Bryant's arrival would allow for true freshman Emery Jones to kind of develop and grow here. So Bryant, at this point, is going to be your bridge quarterback wherever he goes, and I think it would work well in Florida with Bryant's ties there. Let's take a look at number three here, Auburn now on the list, and sure, the Tigers feature a quarterback with another year of eligibility in Jarrett Stidham, but it would not be a shock to see Stidham head to the NFL draft in 2019. So here you go with the bridge quarterback argument here for the Tigers, a program that has only a single high school signee at quarterback on its roster from the last three classes. Plus, Bryant is familiar with the spread principles that Gus Malzahn likes to employ. Now, Malzahn's offense and Sweeney's offense out there in Clemson, not exactly the same per se, but they share similar principles. So that is something that I want you guys to keep in mind here as we think about Auburn as a potential destination for Kelly Bryant. At number two, we remain in the SEC and talk about Vanderbilt, two and two on the year so far. Kyle Shermer is a senior, so his time will be up after this year. Meanwhile, Mo Hassan, the sophomore transfer from Syracuse, Overall, just lacks experience. He has four total throws in his FBS career. So Kelly could be that nice bridge option for Vandy as they try to kind of grow their younger quarterbacks on that roster. There's also Alan Walters, as you see, the true freshman three-star quarterback from New Jersey. But who really knows with him? So the logic with Vanderbilt, very much the same with Auburn as well giving the opportunity for those younger quarterbacks to grow and no clear-cut answer after their current starter. Number one on the list, though, Arkansas. One and three on the season so far. The main reason, the Chad Morris connection. Morris played a role in the program's early evaluation of Bryant in terms of Clemson with Morris being the offensive coordinator there. Morris, former offensive coordinator, of course. Arkansas already has played three different passers so far this season. They've combined to complete 50.8% of their throws. Not very good for the Razorbacks as we stand. They're trying to make it work. They're trying to make it happen. But obviously, Kelly Bryant would be a prime time option for the Razorbacks if he finds a way onto Fayetteville's campus. All right, what's the best possible transfer destination for Kelly Bryant? Let me know in the comments section. Do you think Arkansas makes the most sense? Perhaps Auburn makes some sense. We have some tweets out there. Everybody is chiming in about it. We'll take a look at those as well. But let's summarize my list here. Arkansas is at one. Vanderbilt is at two. Auburn at three. We got Florida at four. Illinois at number five. And West Virginia there at number six. The Top destinations for Kelly Bryant as he looks for that new school out there. So here we go. The tweets are flowing in. And we have students out there citing sources that maybe Kelly Bryant will go to perhaps uh, Kansas State. Apparently that is an option out there. Okay. Maybe Michigan. Maybe Jim Harbaugh brings them on in. Okay. Well, here's somebody chiming in about Auburn. Could that happen? You saw Auburn on my list there. Gus Melzon, similar offense-ish to Clemson's. Kelly Bryant could be going to Arkansas. We have Trey chiming in. So everybody is trying to bring in Kelly Bryant to their respective schools that they report for and everything. So multiple sources. Be very careful when you hear that phrase. That's all I will say.